In today's video, we have 19 coins on the screen, and this is a dealer that I met at a recent foreign co at a recent coin show. Uh, the uh, coin show is the uh, Tennessee State Numismatic Show that happens in Chattanooga twice a year. The next one's going to be March. I think it's March 1st of 2023. It's usually a Friday and a Saturday. This specific dealer in the past has had a lot of foreign coins. He'd bring in a probably a 40 pound tote full of coins historically that you could just sort through and they're all six for a dollar. He hadn't been like that recently. The, the tote he brought in this time was just a couple of pounds to sort through so I didn't end up with as many. But he also has a dollar bin and a two dollar bin. And so I've got coins that were six for a dollar here. I've got coins that were one and two dollars. And I think I've forgotten which are which on here. Um, so I'm going to try and sort that out too. This uh, dealer, I think, was lives in the Chattanooga area, and he's also uh, in Tennessee. He, during the show, runs a young numismatist uh, feature. So uh, there's a part of the show where he leaves his booth, uh, spends an hour uh talking to the kids, try to get them interested in coins. Great for the hobby. I'm glad to support him whenever I can. So I'm going to try and sort these in the order that um, I think we're going to start with all the coins that were uh, two for a dollar. I, I mean, six for a dollar. I got two dollars worth, 12 of them. Let's figure out which ones they were. We'll start with this coin from the Dominican Republic. A little bit well-worn, or actually I should say discolored here, but this was a uh, 25 centavos coin from 1967. KM20A.1, and so this was the first year that this coin was made without silver in it. So I think there was about a, a six or seven year gap uh, when it was not made out of silver, but they made no changes to it, so they left the six and a quarter grams written on the coin. So the KM number is 20A.1. So the A means that it's copper nickel and not silver. And then for the point one, it says that this is a plain edge. It was later replaced with a uh, reeded edge. Maybe if I hold it like that, the uh, discolored parts don't show up as well. Next up is a 100-year-old uh, coin from Japan. I like to pick these up anytime I can find them cheap, although I, I seem to have found a bunch of these recently. This is a 1 sen coin, and this side is up. Now, Japan draws their 1 horizontally instead of vertically. And... When you look at your catalog, there are two different versions of this coin, depending on how old it is. So they don't put a year on it. Instead, what they do is put the year of the emperor. And so uh, the emperor, in this case, was uh, has a symbol of a Taisho. And then the other one would be a Showa. The newer version is a Showa. But this one, when you look at this, uh, it looks like an E with almost like a little lowercase i in front of it. Uh, followed by this symbol. This is the Taisho symbol. And then year of the reign of, of this emperor is 12, so plus means 10, and there's your 2. And then when you convert that, it comes to 1923. So this coin is 100 years old. In the catalog, it's Y number 42. I think I paid $12 for everything that is... Uh, in this video, this next one turned out to be the best bargain. Now, this is going to be a Panamanium one cent coin, but it's actually a rarer version of the Uraka one, pen, uh, one cent coin that we normally see. This one's from 1935, but the uh, reverse is different than what we normally see. It says Republica de Panama and Un Centissimo. This coin was only made in 1935 and 1937. And 35 is rarer. So this coin is actually worth $5. So uh, I got a good one out of the six for a dollar bin here. 
This one's going to be KM14. I had trouble finding 12 uh, coins to purchase in the two for dollar bin. So I ended up picking up what I thought was going to be a, a good trade coin with this George the Six Canadian one cent coin. As it turns out, uh, at another booth, uh, I purchased a bulk lot that probably literally had 10 of these in it. Now, there are some subtle changes over the years, but this is the 1952. So I think it's the last year they made the George the Sixth uh, Canadian cent. This one is KM11. That doesn't seem right, but uh, probably not going to be KM11. But it is 1952. Next, we have a coin from Costa Rica where I have trouble remembering which coins I do and don't have because they're all pretty much similar to this design. They'll have Republic of Costa Rica on this side with the uh, the big shield, and then you flip it over and it has the actual denomination. So this one is a 50 centimos coin, and... Uh, from 1976. This is KM 189.3. So there's a lot of varieties here. Uh, the point three is called the large 50. So there's other years where the 50 is smaller than this one. And then as I check my notes, there's also another version. This one is called the small ship variety. So when you look at the the uh, the sailboat that's on here there's other versions of this coin where the boat appears larger uh, compared to the the water and the mountains and the the sun and there's also kind of another boat that's kind of hiding on the other side of the mountains back there so that's uh, other varieties and you'll find that a lot of the coins for all denominations are going to have subtle changes like this over the years there is another older variation of the coin where there are only five stars that go across here. There's seven in this, this one, but on an earlier KM number, there are only five that appear up there. Next, we have a coin from India, a, a commemorative of, I'm probably going to mess up this name, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru it says that uh, he lived 1889 to 1964, and so technically this coin isn't doesn't have a date printed on it. So you would assume uh, 1964. They actually printed this uh, or made this for four years, 1964 through 67. There's also two variations of this coin. This one is the, uh, his name is written in the, well, this is what they would call the Hindu, or the Hindi legend, with the language written on the top. There's another version where his name is written in English, so there are two varieties of this coin. They made a Gandhi coin that did the same thing, where there are two versions, a Hindi and an English version of this one. So this one's going to be a 50 paisa coin. And I'll also point out that we've got a um, a diamond right here as a uh, a mint mark, and so the diamond means Bombay. If that was not there, then it would be from Calcutta. Next, we'll move to a coin from South Africa. the uh, The five cent coin featured this uh, stork or crane for many years, but there's a period throughout the 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s, where they would have portraits appear on their coin instead of the normal crest that appears on the back. So this coin appeared only 1976 with uh, President Fouch appearing on all of their circulating coins in 1976, and then there was a different President 79 and another president, 82, and, and going backwards, I think they had uh, some 
previous uh, leaders on some of the back of the coins uh, temporarily. So this five cent coin is KM93. Here's a, a coin from Guatemala and I'll, I really like the design of this coin. It's very simple. It just says Un Centavo de Quetzal. Quetzal is the uh, the uh, currency in Guatemala, and so it's like in an American saying, it's one cent of a dollar. But uh, I, I like the font that's used on here, so that's a, uh, uh, I, I like picking up this coin. This one looks like it was probably underground for a while, because it's got a lot of dirt on it, and so I'm, I'm not going to clean the coin, but there is a bird that is standing on here. Of course, there is a scroll in the middle that has, I think, the date that Guatemala became a country, and a couple of uh, musket-type rifles and uh, even swords that are behind it from this coin from 1946. So this one's going to be a um, KM249. This is also made out of brass, although it's kind of tough to tell because it's uh, sort of dirty. Let's look at a couple of coins from Denmark. They're, they're both going to be uh, one kroner coins. This one is the last year of Frederick the Ninth, King of Denmark. And so one thing that you see with Denmark coins that I don't think you really see anywhere else are Mint Master and Moneyer initials. So on the bottom of this coin, it has S and then a heart and then another S. And so that means that uh, they put the uh, the mint or the the mint master initial on the coin, and every once in a while the mint master or the moneyer leave and the initials change, and so that gives this coin its own KM number when nothing else changes. But the the uh, money or the mint master, I'm getting my tongue tied saying that. So this one is KM eight hundred fifty one point two. Because it's the only year that Frederick the Ninth appeared with S and an S at the very bottom. So for that reason, I didn't have this coin because it is a uh, one-year coin. But then we're going to move on to the next ruler, another one krona coin. This one's uh, later from 1986 where the queen was uh, Marguerite the Second. And here the letters are larger to see. You can see it's an R and a heart and the letter B. So there are three different versions of this coin based on the initials that are at the bottom. This one's KM 862.3. We're going to move to a coin from Bolivia. This one's going to be a 20 or Viente Centavos from 1970. I like this Bolivian design. You've got an animal like a llama in the front, a palm tree, hills, mountains, and then the sun shining in the background. This one's KM189. And then the last of our six for a dollar coins is going to be this one from Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia had a big mix of cultures, and so a lot of their coins are written in different languages. So this one is uh, even two different alphabets, if you've never noticed that before. So at the bottom it has SFR, Yugoslavia, and then it says the same thing at the top in Cyrillic. It, and also, if you've never noticed this before, it's uh, at the bottom has a date on here for, uh, that's probably the year that Yugoslavia became a country. The year is 1943, the month is in Roman numerals, so that's 11, and then the date of 29. So we're going to, uh, now that I think about it, we're going to come up on the 80th anniversary of that. Well, I'm filming this on uh, November 22nd, but this video is probably not going to upload for a month or two <laughs> after that. Uh, flip this one over. It is a two dinar, or a dinara coin. And here it has dinara written in four different languages. From 1977. 
This one's going to be KM57. We are left with seven coins, and I paid either one or two dollars for all of these coins. We're going to pick up the one that is, um, we've got a, uh, a former Ottoman coin. You look at a coin like that, and if you don't, if you can't read Arabic, you're going to have no idea what any of this says. And so this is where something like the CoinScope app is going to be really helpful. Usually when I see the Ottoman logo, I look in Turkey. As it turns out, this one is from Egypt. So the next thing I check for is the date on here. So that is a date of 1293 in Arabic. So that's not the year the coin was made. That was the year that the ruler ascended to uh, to take over. So it's called the, uh, sometimes you'll see it listed as the ascension date, or sometimes it's listed as the accession date. I don't know the difference between those two terms. So again, that's not the year the coin was made. There's sometimes a, a second number on here. So we flip it back over, there's a 21. And actually, that's a 31. So that means this coin was uh, made in 1905. This is also the first year that it has an H mint mark on it for the heat and mint out of uh, out of uh, Britain. So the value on here, and it's written on here somewhere, it says that this is one twentieth of a Kirsch. KM two hundred eighty eight. Next, we're going to uh, come up to a coin from Israel, and this is going to be one of the earliest coins that Israel created when they uh, became their own country again in the 1940s. This is a 10 Pruda coin, and the calendar date on here is listed right here. Now, on the, the Israeli calendar, it's year 5709. And at the time, I think they just assumed the 5, so it would say 709 as my light went out. All right, I switched lights on here. So we're back to this Israeli coin. It's a year 5709 on their calendar, 1949 on our calendar. This one is KM11. Flip this one over. A lot of the uh, the uh, the early Israeli coins uh, were throwbacks to older designs of coins, or their culture from um, millennia ago. This one features this uh, container called an amphora. Let me flick about uh, flip it back over here. There is a variation to be concerned about on here, and uh, it's underneath, there's kind of a dash right here, and then kind of an empty space underneath it. That means that this was made at the Heaton Mint in uh, Britain. There's another uh, version of this coin where there's a dot right there, or in the price guide, it's, it's called a pearl. And so the catalog uh, says the pearl version is... Um, one-third of them, and the no-pearl version like this one is two-thirds. So uh, either way, it was a British mint, but this one was made by the Heaton Mint. The one with the daughter pearl is um, has more value to it. Uh, this coin books for $1.40. And I always think it's a, a good trade piece to, to get this one. The Tin Pruda. Next, we're going to go to a country. This was uh, one of those uh, that was controlled by Portugal for a long time. This is a 50 centavos coin, where a lot of the countries that were ruled by Portugal have essentially identical designs until you flip it over, and it has the name of the actual country on it, which in this case is Angola. So a lot of these Portuguese-controlled countries are very similar to this one, where it'll have the uh, just the name of 
the country will be different. Some might say Angola, uh, Mozambique, um, a few others like that. And everything else on this side would stay the same. There is a version of this coin that's a little bit older that says uh, uh, Colony of Angola. That was a, uh, a one-year commemorative coin. But I believe this is the first year that this Angolan coin was made. But it's, uh, it's made out of bronze, but in 1974, for one year only, it was made out of copper nickel. This one is KM75. Next, we're moving to the only silver coin in the video. This one's going to be from Guatemala. It's a very tiny coin. But we saw a Guatemalan coin earlier. This is essentially the same back as that one, just smaller. But they have added the 0 0.720. So it's 72% silver on this coin from 1957. Really tiny, uh, probably the size of an old U.S. half dime. So or in other words, uh, smaller than a dime. Say five centavos, so a U.S. half dime would have been five cents. Features a tree on here. Nineteen fifty-seven KM two fifty-seven. This has um, silver weight is point zero three eight six, and so at twenty-two dollars an ounce, we're look we're looking about eighty cents of silver value on this coin. Now we're going to move to a coin from Colombia. From 1886. This is a five centavos coin. And when I look at the catalog, there were three different five centavos coins, all made in 1886. So there's five, uh, all of the variations are here in the back. There's another version where the five is smaller. And then underneath the centavos are some more leaves that go underneath it. And then there's another version of that where the five is even smaller than the last one. So there's... Essentially, you check by the size of the five, and this is the largest five because there are no branches at the very bottom. This one is, um, there's also an, there's an 1886 where the six over five for the people that like those variations, that's actually listed in the catalog as a rarer version of this coin. And uh, one thing I, I had trouble understanding in the catalog as it said this was a very rare coin and a coin that's going to book for what is it saying here this coin books for a dollar so it can't be that rare but there's also a two and a half centavo coin that was also made in 1886 that had the same note on it, it said the reason that the two and a half centavo which was worth it didn't even put a price it just put dashes on there because it was so rare and then this one that was worth a dollar it said something that, that they thought it was, um, there's no proof of this, but they thought that Colombia made it to circulate in Panama for a short time when Colombia was trying to rule Panama. And that might be why it's so scarce. So that was an interesting note that uh, couldn't quite follow exactly everything that they were saying on it, but thought that was interesting. Next we're going to move to the oldest coin of the video. This one has a hole in it or it'd be worth more. This is a two or coin from 1858. So it's got a hole and is corroded. <laughs> and of course, well worn like you would normally see for a coin that's uh, 150 years old like this, but features King Oscar or also listed as Oscar the first. KM 688. This coin was made from 1856 to 58. And Sweden, if you've never seen this before, in some of their coins, they pronounce it or spell it Sverigis. Sverigis, maybe? On a previous year of this coin, there's a variation on the size of his beard. So there's the long beard variation and the short beard variation.
That leaves us with uh, one coin left. Very well worn, but it says five lepta. It has Greek letters on it, but this is not a Greek coin. This is actually from the country of Crete. There was a time that Crete wanted to be autonomous from Greece, and so they uh, printed their own coins. I believe only in the year 1900. This one's going to be KM3. So all I have is uh, a crown, uh, a couple of words, the year 1900, a couple of privy marks on this side. And let me flip it back over to uh, show the A mint mark. That A mint mark means this was printed in Paris. And so it's going to have a couple of privy marks that are normally sh uh, seen in the Paris Mint. So that's what these little symbols are uh, on either side of the date of 1900. So to show you how rare this coin is, in this condition, this coin books for $5. And with as well worn as it is. If you found this in MS60 uncirculated, the catalog value is $300 of this coin. So that's just to show you how rare, and uh, there just weren't many of these. This is the third time I've ever picked up a coin from Crete. So yeah, this was, uh, this and the Panamanian coins are the uh, probably the two best coins that I picked up in this lot. All right, uh, that was a fun little, uh, nice little coin lot. I've got a couple more videos from this specific show that I'm going to have videos for. If you like these videos, I do have a foreign coin playlist that I'll link here at the end. Thanks for watching. Bye.